Hey, I'm Stephanie. Welcome to the Dandy Bus. When I found out that I, was, I had to be out of my apartment by the end of the month and that I was probably gonna be out of a job at the end of the month. Uh, I totally panicked and had to think really fast about what I was gonna do. Because of how COVID all played out that uh, I even stumbled upon bus living. It, it was my mom who asked like, you know, how do you get out from under the fear? Decided that I needed to go tiny in order to get out from all the fearful what-ifs of what could happen during this pandemic. I decided I wasn't gonna be controlled by fear and I wasn't gonna be controlled by what else the world was going on, that I was gonna make my own way for peace. And that's what this bus was about and what it came to be for me. So I went with a 2005 GMC Savannah 3500, I think it's a V6. It gets about 15 miles to the gallon and it's still small enough to be able to park in a normal parking space. Got a rooftop deck on top and uh, the wood siding on the side. I'm a woodworker by trade so I had to geek out on the wood and uh, the little dandelion wood burned accent for uh, the dandy bus. So this is just a uh, telescopic ladder. I found it on Amazon, and if you are willing to spend the time to search for a deal, you can find them. This is normally like a $200 ladder, but I got it because the box was damaged for 44 bucks. Like, can't beat it. Welcome to the inside of my home. So all in all, with I did not have a lot to work with. I had a little bit in savings, and so I uh, tried to cut it uh, as close as I could. For the vehicle itself was 3500 I got it off of Facebook Marketplace. And then all in all, with the purchase of the vehicle, we're right around eight grand, just under, um, for the whole build. And most of that came from being able to cut lumber costs with salvaging materials, either through my dad's connection uh, to construction and getting materials that were going to be thrown away from job sites, uh, all the... The wood on the ceiling and the walls is all salvaged and um, just using what I could find and, and trying to find as many uses for, for what I had on hand. And that, that saved a ton of money. So it's, it can be done. If you have a budget, it can be done. So start off with this floor is actually a uh, hardwood. It's hickory. And I got it on Marketplace for 100 bucks because I only needed 100 square feet. Welcome to the kitchen. Uh, it was super important to me to be able to uh, prioritize hospitality and make space for cooking for people or having people over. Um, so the kitchen was a non-negotiable. It had to be big. I had to have plenty of counter space. And oddly enough, in 92 square feet, I have the most functional kitchen I've ever had of any of the apartments I've ever lived in. This is a hundred year old heart pine and it was saved from a house and they were just going to throw it away. My cousin saved it and now it's my countertop and it's beautiful. In winters this becomes my heater. Pop this guy on, turn the propane on and get the fan moving the heat throughout it and that was 20 bucks instead of like the $70 Mr. Buddies. That goes, and so since I use it for my heater, I get about a month off the 11 pound propane tank in winter right now, but it's also Florida, so I can get away with not having such a heavy duty heater. So one of my favorite parts about building this bus was finding how cheaply I could do things while keeping quality. So Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, any kind of uh, repurpose or construction hookups you can get are a great help. So these are all uh, mason jars. You just uh, nail a hole into the top of the mason jar and then screw it up there with just a little bolt. Definitely have to say, my mom and I built this. This house was built by two women. Um, we did it in three months and uh, it was an amazing experience being able to build this out with my mom. Here's my fridge. Just got, you know, 
fridge or freezer, uh, not a dual zone, but it works, runs really efficiently. And then sliding doors, just because, uh, you know, in a bus, everything's custom, it has to be. And this was a little Ikea hack. So these bins cost like under $2 for each one. And we used a router to uh, drill some tracks into the wood. So instead of spending, you know, $30 on just cabinet hardware for each drawer, plus building a box and a facing. This was, I knew it would be covered, so it was a great uh, budget-friendly option that is super functional and everything's really quiet because there's just less metal when I'm driving down the road. And then I have my uh, fresh water and gray water. Uh, I've got 12 gallons of fresh water and about seven gallons of gray. Use eco-friendly products. You can dump your gray water uh, wherever you need. And um, so far, it's just me and the rabbits, so we, we, don't, we don't use a whole lot, so this works well. I did what I could, what I could, like, bite off and chew myself, and uh, not having any experience, never building anything like this ever, um, it was important that I started somewhere that I felt confident that I could do this myself. Um, somewhat familiar with plumbing, only to the extent that I've had to figure things out in coffee shops on the go. Uh, but uh, this, you know, putting this all together, it's it's a huge learning curve. So sticking with what I felt like I could process and that I was comfortable pulling off by myself. And then as I meet people on the road and learn more that I could upgrade. So everything that I built, it can be upgraded as as I learn and grow in this bus life. So I come from a long line of woodworkers and my mom is, is a phenomenal craftswoman and uh, she can build anything and I've grown up around that. So uh, when it came time to build a house, she was the first person I turned to. Uh, she has a workshop ready to go. She taught me how to carve spoons, um, and which is now how I make a living. And um, so together, she and I, in three months, built this bus, uh, just the two of us. My dad likes to say that he uh, had nothing to do with it, that he held up boards and brought sandwiches. So uh, it was, you know, just a woman-powered, woman-fueled project. And I could not have done this without my mom. It's, it's incredible to have shared this project with her and to have had her uh, help me take this space to a, a far more uh, higher level of quality than I could have done on my own. So it's, it was amazing, I'll never forget it. So the sink and the knife rack are both just Ikea hacks. The um, round sink, I love, it's nice and deep, good for dishes. Uh, this little faucet I got on Amazon for under 20 bucks, it moves around and does what you need it to. Got a little water pump there. So this is the living room of the bus or the guest room when it needs to be. I will start from this side over. This is the rabbits area. It was uh, super important to me that they had a space uh, that they could call their own. They didn't choose the tiny life. I did, but thankfully it's uh, really suiting them as well. So We've got just their little area and under the couch is actually half of it is their litter box and their hay area. They're a lot like cats. They mostly just sleep and, uh, but they're way cuter. So this is my couch. Um, most of the lumber from this was made from an old desk that was being thrown away. So again, salvaged materials and nothing a coat of paint can't spruce up. And this back piece, the backboard of the couch, actually comes up and goes in the front to extend to make this a, a twin-size uh, cot for guests. Again, because hospitality was super important, I think the best advice that I got when I was building was to establish your values and your priorities of what is important to you in your life and important to you of having your home life feel like and look like. And so I knew that... Uh, if I wasn't able to host people, I mean, again, it's a tiny space. I don't know how many people will want to take it up, but it was important to me that I was able to have people over and for them to spend the night and journey with me. So this slides out. And again, in tiny living, everything has to have as many purposes as possible. So it's also 
uh, coffee table. Again, change up the vibe, feel good, change up the space. All these curtains are insulated, so when they're down, they help keep the bus way cooler, um, and it really helps keep the warmth in and gives a bit of a blackout effect, which is making my mornings go way slower lately. I knew from the get-go I wanted to go with open shelving um, just because it's such a small space uh, that I didn't want it to feel too closed in and because the head space also is so tight I thought it was really important to have uh, as much open feel as necessary. This isn't the most practical storage but you know you've got you've got so much other bulky storage hidden around the bus that uh, it this this becomes more of a an artistic piece uh, like this is way more functional but you know this this it's home so these these hold homey items that you need from day to day and just help the space not feel so like tight and closed in so I wanted it to feel really open which is also why I didn't cover up any of the windows so I might be paying for it in the summertime but I think for the feel it was it was really necessary to keep it as as open as possible. So this is the back end of the bus and I'm so happy with the way this space turned out. I've got plenty of storage. Here is my closet with all my solar generator is down at the bottom. So I am operating now off of a 1500X Goal Zero Yeti. That was a huge help of being in the tiny house community. I first uh, only equip myself with 330 watts of a solar generator with a 120 watt portable panel and uh, had n grossly underestimated how much solar I would need and was able to upgrade with the help of this community and helping me along the way. So don't freak out if you don't know what you're doing at first. You'll learn. And then over here is my pantry and all my cleaning supplies at the bottom. Um, at first, I thought I would only do some like halfway partitions, and then as we just started building, like needs were presenting themselves, and I realized I would not have enough uh, food storage uh, without, or clothes storage without these guys. So you'll learn as, as you're building, the, the build will instruct you what you need. And these are just hooked together with uh, magnets on the top and bottom, keep it closed, and they do really good with traveling, so that all worked out well. And then underneath, I have even more storage. This whole door comes off and slides up. And under there is my toilet. And I have more, like, heavy winter coats and summer stuff. So you learn to have your closet uh, more seasonally to accommodate for the small closet space. And uh, just some art stuff and all my uh, workshop stuff's in the back. But it's my bed area, and it, it feels really good. It's a full-size mattress, and... Opening these up to wake up to some amazing views has just been the the biggest blessing I could ever ask for. I'm so fortunate. Now that I've been living in it, I uh, definitely confirmed all of my suspicions that I would hit my head on this and have hit my head on this more than anything else in the bus. But it pays off because this AC is hooked up to the motor and when I really need to cool off fast, this thing pumps out. So I'm so thankful I listened to all the forums that recommended keeping the AC unit because it has definitely saved me a time or two. So worth having a permanent dent in my head, I think. Got a magnetic curtain that goes up on the back uh, to insulate those windows. And um, it's, it's such a nice pod you just you feel so secure in your space at night it's it's wonderful so I've got these nightstands on either side depending on which way I need to position my head if the bus is leaning a little bit but these just fold down and can be out of the way as needed or but I kind of like having them up all the time it's really nice to set my uh, tablet on here and put my keyboard in my lap and just work or watch tv from here so that's been a, a nice feature to have I had never taken on anything like this ever. Uh, my mom had all the experience building things, and in turn, I'd always been a part of her projects, but never, ever tackled anything like this, ever, ever, ever. Uh, it was YouTube, it was research, it was knowing how to Google the right questions to find the right answer. 
Um, so I always tell anybody that comes on the bus, like, seriously, if I can do this, anybody can. Like, YouTube, knowing how to ask questions, using what you have, and being creative with your resources. I mean, anybody can do it. There's so many ways to build a schoolie, and there's so many ways to, like, get your freedom. So just go out and get it. Don't wait. Welcome to my garage, pretty much. It has uh, more of the rabbit stuff. They 80% of their diet's hay, so we always have a bunch of hay on the bus. And uh, my tools, uh, their litter, the anything I need for outdoors, and then the rest of the space is all of my uh, wood carving tools and uh, my uh, pieces that I sell on my travels and make on my travels. So. That's that's majority of, of the space back here is dedicated to that. I have everything I need, and that's a really good feeling to have. I honestly do not think that without COVID, I would have been brave enough to take the plunge into bus life. Just made the decision and didn't really have time to consider whether, uh, you know, tiny living was the right choice, but it was the only choice, and so I had to just commit to it and then commit to figuring out how to do it. And I'm so incredibly thankful for the, the way that life directed me to bus life and that it directed me to bus life. I first bought a travel trailer and tried to renovate that. And, uh, you know, with COVID, the market was changing and prices were going through the roof. Inventory was disappearing. And um, so I had to kind of rethink my whole plan and, and uh I was led to schoolies and had never heard what that was. And the more research I did, it just seemed like the numbers made sense. And for me, that's what, what kind of made the choice for me. And I'm, I'm so fortunate and blessed that it paid off the way it has, because this is by far the best thing I have ever done for myself, ever, hands down. This is everything I needed. This has been a open door to so much healing I've been looking for in my life and everything's coming full circle here. And, uh, every day I just try and hold that close of like, like life, life is this good, this of how good this life feels and just imprint that on, on my, on my heart and, and just carry that. Cause it's, it's the best, it's the best way to live. I love when people follow along. It's a great community to have both in person and online. And uh, you can follow me and the Dandy Bus at at and the underscore gray. And you can follow my wood carving, which is how you can support the journey and support uh, what we got going on here at at Hold Fast Carving. Uh, just trying to make heirlooms and pass them on for you and yours. So follow us along. And if you feel like buying a spoon, buy one. But other than that, like, let's go, let's go hang out outside. Like, let's get out. Let's go have fun.